Hello teachers, how are you doing? This video, I'm going to be walking through Illuminate, how to create your own assessments um, that you can use for progress reporting, or if you want to gather some quick data um, using Illuminate, uh, which is a pretty good platform, but it's not a straightforward platform, um, meaning that there's a little bit of a learning curve, but once you've got that, it's actually quite simple to create your assessments for your students, especially if you're just gonna be pulling from the available questions and items that I've created over the past few years. You can even use some of the questions from our post-test, the quarter assessments. So as students learn them, you can give quick assessments and see where students are at. And I think that'd be a great way for tracking your students on their way towards um, our quarter assessments. So you should all be familiar with getting to Illuminate, which by the way is changing its name to like Renaissance DNA, just so that's out there, but I'll still refer to it as Illuminate for a while. But you guys are familiar with coming here. This is how you go find your assessments or live proctor your students who are testing. In order to get to where you can create your own assessments, you do have this button here, create assessment. I always just come over here to assessments and then browse item bank. This actually lets you look at the questions before you do that step where it creates an assessment for you to throw those into. And that'll make more sense in a little bit. Once you go to browse your item bank, you're going to have access um, possibly to some questions. Over here on the left, do make sure that you check box the Kansas City Public Schools because that's where I publish all of my test questions to. So once you've checked box that, you'll have access to anything that I've created and I've published to that. Um, if you check box my items, any questions that you create will be available there as well. Um, but in order to pull up the questions, it's actually looking for the standards. So real quick, I'm going to refresh this as there's no standards. So notice there's no standards available. It's probably just going to pull every single question. That's probably what you're getting if you check boxes. It's just every question, every grade level, all sorts of different things. So you want to go to edit based standards. And for science, you want to go to providers. So do this first tab and come down under Missouri Learning Standards and checkbox that. Under Subjects, you want Science 2016. And then Grade Level, this depends on where you are at as a teacher. But if you come down, uh, you should have your is your middle school. So your middle school is broken up into the three physical science, life science, and aerospace science. So whatever standards that you're testing for, go ahead and select those. Um, and then down below, you got high school, physical, life science, and earth space. So I'll go ahead and just, uh, let's switch over to life science. I'll do some life science so that it updates. Now you can see, oh, I've got all the life science standards that I can choose from. So I know the first unit is this these first few standards. So I'm going to checkbox this one. It automatically will add the clarification statement. I found that causes issues. So don't add the clarification statement. Go ahead and unclick that. I'll go ahead and do a couple of standards there. So we'll do LS1A1, LS1A2, click done. This will now refresh to only pull questions tied to that standard. So now you see we only have 32 questions. And now I can go through and I can select the questions that I want. Um, it's only gonna show a small portion, but if you click this, the expanded view, now I can see the full question. You can also limit based off of, hey, I only want um, multiple choice. I only want DOK level threes, things like that. And there's a few other filters that you can grab as well. Um, but mostly I just kind of look at the questions. So once you're ready to start creating your assessment, you can either click here to add item and I'll create the assessment or hit create assessment and it's going to have you name it. So we'll just do a test assessment. Great. Once you've either added an item or did the way I just did, which you create an assessment, it comes to this blank page where it tells you either the one item that you added or, hey, you don't have any items added. And now you have two little tabs you can toggle between the build assessment and then the browse items. Browse items is where we just were. I'm gonna go ahead and add a few items. As you see, it's pretty easy now that you have the assessment created. I just click the add item. 
you'll see this ticker update. With Illuminate, do be careful going too fast. So if I click and click and add items, sometimes the update doesn't work and it doesn't add a question. So just take your time. Don't go rushing too fast. Any questions that have a passage and passage doesn't necessarily mean that it's a reading passage. That's just what they call if you want to add a separate image so students can view the image and the question on the screen at the same time. To add any questions tied to that, you have to hit view the item so that it opens it up. And then there'll either be one, sometimes there's more questions tied to a specific passage, but now I can just add the item from here, hit confirm, and now you'll see my ticker update to three. So that question's been added in. So we'll just add in a couple more so that way we have five questions. There we go, ticker's at five. So now I can jump over to build assessment. Once I'm over here, this is where I can decide, do I want to delete any of these questions? Oh, I want to change the ordering of the questions, um, the weight of questions, anything like that. That's where that all can happen. But once you've got all your questions, how you want them, you're going to go up to done. If you want to come back and work on this later, save as draft. I'll show you where you'll find that. But then you can publish. I remember we called this one test assessment. So we hit publish. It'll take just a second to think. And then it's going to pull me to that assessment page where I can make some additional modifications. I want to show you guys how to get to here, though. Um, and this is, you're pretty familiar with it. This is how once your students have started taking data is where you get that colorful graph showing the students where they landed. Uh, but let's jump back to the main page and find our way back to the assessment we just created. And it's very simple. We're just going to go to View Assessments. And it's going to pull up all the assessments. Over on the left, make sure if you're looking for your assessment, you click My Assessment, and then you should find it very easily. You can always type in the name of the assessment or part of the name to pull it up. You can click on Shared with Me. That's typically how you can easily find the stuff that I create and type in Science, and then you should be able to find it pretty quick. But if you click My Assessments, boom, it should pop up. Um, and then to get back to where we were, you can just click Take Assessments. Now, let me show you one quick thing. Some people at some schools are using Illuminate to do some progress checks, and they have teachers who teach the same subject. So you may want to create the assessment and then share that with someone who's teaching the same subject so you just have the same test. This is the Share button. You can do it on the previous page as well, but it takes you to the same spot. And there's different ways that you can share. You can share it with everyone. That would give it to everybody in the district. I wouldn't recommend that. If you just want to give it to a site, you can just plug in your school and then everybody at your school has access to it. Um, you can also just go directly to user. So I can just click user and just type in their email and then just they have it. And then you want to make sure that they can administer the test as well. View and download and administer. If you want them to make any changes, they can edit and share as well. But this is what I would do when I share my quarter assessments with you. Is I checkbox those, add you in. Anybody that you've added will show up up here so you can double check that everybody that you need is there. Just in case you need to share the assessment, that's how you would do it. Let's head back to our assessment. Uh, one of the things that you'll want to do is how the performance bands will be set up. So under settings, performance bands, and you probably have it set to a district default, which is 90%, 80%, 70% anything like that. If you're fine with that, you can leave it as is. If you want it to match what it looks like for the district, um, the districts is, if you scroll all the way down, it's this square root curve performance bands. It's like a graded curve using a square root function. I don't quite understand it, but that's how it upgrades things. And then if you just check box, so that way everything's checked, your standards and the assessment overall, Make sure that you have that and hit apply and you should see it change over here. Once you see it changed, now you know that it's set. You can go back. So now it's going to categorize those students within those gray bands. If you forget to do that before, don't worry. That can be done later, even after the students have taken the test um, and it'll just update. So not a huge deal if you forget that part. 
But now you're ready. You want to actually give the test to your students. That's how to do that. You need to administer the test. Now, there are ways that you could do print off and do some. Um, I had a separate video with this where you can have a Scantron sheet and then grade it. So there is that option if you want to do that. What we do for quarter assessments is this online testing. I notice right now there are no current administrations. So I'm going to click test with quick code. This is the way that we do it for the quarter assessments. We've done test and portal before. Quick code seems to work just a little bit better. It'll auto generate this administration right here where you have the access code. If you click on it, this is the link. You can give this link to your students and it'll automatically take them to the test. All they have to do is type in their uh, beginning part of their email. Or if you're using like the lockdown browser, students will go ahead and type this in. So that's why when I give it to you guys, I give you the code and the link to it. So that way that's how students can get there. This is also another way that you can get to live proctoring, but there's other ways you can get there. Now, before you actually start to give this out to students, you want to make sure that you edit some of the um, features of it. So the testing window start is just going to be this exact day at this exact time. So there's really no need to change it because it's unless you want to put it towards like Tuesday so nobody can accidentally get in before it's too soon. Today's Tuesday, that was a bad example. But when does my testing window end? It defaults to about one week and a few hours later. So if you only want this open a couple of days or for a full week or whatever it is that you want, you could change the testing window. I'm not going to go through and highlight all these other settings, um, but you can have change the amount of pauses, randomize the choice order, give students access to a calculator, text to speech, all those sorts of things. You can mess with those. This last part I don't typically mess with, but if there's something there that you need, you can do that and then hit save. So now all your settings are saved. It should still be the same access code. But there you go. Now the test is ready to be given out. So it's a bit of a process, but once the test is created, it's there, it's usable by everybody. And the data reports, which I have a separate video on, um, is very useful. And you can pull all the questions that I've created. So you don't actually have to go through and create your own. I don't think I showed you how to create questions. Um, if you want to do some of that, I'd be happy to create a separate video for that. Okay, I think that was quite enough, um, but that's how you utilize Illuminate if you're trying to make progress um, assessments or just simple assessments that you can do quickly in class. I hope you found this video useful. All right, bye.